Hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. So in this video, I am going to quickly share with you a few important tips on uh, how to properly return a value from a coroutine scope. So this is the project that I have uh, created for the demonstration purposes and uh, we are going to write the code uh, within our view model because here we already have an access to the view model scope. And this uh, view model will be initialized inside our example screen which will be launched whenever we uh, launch our application. So first uh, I'm going to show you how to return a value from inside the coroutine scope and then with another example I'm going to show you how to return that uh, same value but uh, on the outside of the coroutine scope as well. So let's here first uh, call a view model scope and let's launch a coroutine, right? Now uh, within this coroutine uh, we can now create for example a result variable now here within our coroutine scope, I'm going to call uh, with a context function and specify uh, some of the dispatchers that we can choose from, for example, the IO, right? And now with this uh, with context function, we can just return here a simple value, for example, let's say a Boolean value uh, after maybe three seconds, right? So here, let me just log uh, one message. So I'm going to log this uh, actual result. And now let's uh, run our application and see uh, what kind of a result uh, we are going to get. So uh, after we launch this application, uh, we're going to initialize our view model, and after three seconds, uh, we should be able to see here this uh, true message. And there you go. So with this, we were able to return the result from this uh, with context function, and only after that result uh, was received, only then we were able to print that result. So this example was uh, pretty easy, right? However, uh, when you want to return a value from the outside of this uh, scope, then it can be tricky. So let's uh, write here one more example for that purpose. I'm going to comment out this uh, example here and now I'm going to also create one variable, for example result. Let's now call view model scope. So uh, when you want to return a value from the coroutine scope, instead of calling the launch uh, builder, we need to call the async builder, right? So this async builder will just uh, return us the value and store that value uh, inside this uh, variable result by using this uh, deferred as a wrapper, right? Now here we can just, uh, for example, specify also that delay of uh, 3 seconds and return true afterwards. Now let's also uh, log that result uh, after we get that value, right? So let's here type result. And let's see now whether we should be able to uh, receive the result uh, from this example. Let's just uh, start our application. And uh, immediately after we ro uh, launch our application, without uh, waiting 3 seconds, uh, we're going to print here that result. And that result is of course this deferred value. So from this example here you can see that uh, even though we have used this uh, async coroutine builder to actually return the value, we were not able to uh, print that uh, true uh, value in our uh, log here. So if I here add for example one more print, so after 3 seconds, so if... Uh, here now I launch this application once again, uh, then you will see that this result right here uh, will be printed first and only after 3 seconds we're going to print this uh, done message. So in order to be able to actually wait for this uh, result to complete and only then print this value, we could try to uh, call a wait function, right? However, as you can see now, this uh, await function is actually a suspend function, which means that we need to add uh, one more coroutine scope, and then within that coroutine scope, we can call this uh, async. For example, we can just call here a view model scope, and then within this coroutine scope, we will be able to call this uh, await function. And even in that case, here we're going to receive a warning that this uh, async can actually be converted into a uh, with context, which is the same example that we have already written right here. So uh, with uh, that um, example right here, we were not able to return the exact value from this coroutine scope. So how can we achieve that? How can we actually wait for this uh, uh, to complete and only then uh, print that value? So in that case, uh, we need to uh, remove this await. Uh, let's just remove this as well. And here we can also uh, call uh, get completed function, right? So this function, as you can see, requires uh, us to add uh, one experimental coroutine API annotation. So let's just add that annotation. And with this, uh, let's try to see whether uh, now we should be able to receive back that result. So after we launch our application, uh, our application will crash. And the reason why is because here now we can see uh, the message that says um, a illegal state exception, uh, this job has not completed yet. So uh, if we check the documentation of this function, you will see that this uh, will actually throw an illegal state exception if this deferred value has not completed yet. 
So to be able to uh, retrieve data value from outside of the courting scope after it completes, uh, here we need to call this result, then a dot invoke on completion. And here uh, we need to paste that uh, log right here and we need to say if uh, it or this uh, actual throwable from this lambda is actually null. So if there is no any throwable uh, exception, only then uh, we can uh, print that result. And now let's see whether uh, everything should work uh, fine as we have expected. Let's launch now our application and we should be able to receive that result uh, after 3 seconds. There you go. So now uh, we were able to retrieve the value uh, from the outside of this uh, courting scope and wait until that uh, result is actually completed so that we can use that value in our application. Now uh, one thing to remember here is that this uh, invoke on completion function uh, is actually executing uh, synchronously once this uh, job is actually completed. And there you go. So that's uh, one of the ways to uh, return uh, your value from the outside of the coroutine scope. So uh, let me know in the comment section down below what you think about this uh, uh, whole approach. Also uh, comment down below if you have another solution for this uh, issue. And of course uh, be sure to like this video but only if you find it helpful. For this video that will be all.